Good evening. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to talk about a case study, one hectare, quite close to here. It's a farm called Finca El Mato in Tacaronte. Mm, I work for the Applied Economy Department of the University of La Laguna, but I also work for the Association for the Promotion of Permaculture. And I think that this is a perfect um, opportunity for me to talk about maximal use of organic waste. Now, El Mato is a... Mm, benchmark for local population. It is a non-profit, has been declared public use with social, environmental, sustainability criteria and has been since 2011. The UN uh, awarded its uh, seal of, of, of good practices in its Habitat program for 2012 and it also is a source of inspiration for people of the islands. <clears throat> now, you may know what permaculture is, but I only discovered it in 2008 and I fell in love with this farm. So what is it? Well, there are many different definitions, but I think this is a good uh, definition. It's a system of design that incorporates plants, animals, countryside, construction, technology and human settlement in a harmonious and symbiotic system. Therefore, we can establish uh, uh, di diversity so we can have stability and resilience in our natural systems. Mm, therefore, we will be able to enhance sustainability in the long term. We've had 20 years of trial and error. So I think now is a good moment for us to talk about it. Now, our earth contact is the beginning of the whole process. Earth contact is something that we talk about when we organize courses and we have a triangular method. We have oil, we have our table and then we have the third plank of this uh, triangle. Now, I first came to El Mato farm in 2008 and I came with a box and this box, this crate is the third side of our triangle. Mm, now, mm, we have 250 useful plants on our farm, plants that we can use as herbs, we can eat them, so on and so forth. And more than 60 of these plants were placed in this crate that uh, I was producing now in the last year of production, 2014-2015. And I think that food is a really important element here. Above all, food sovereignty. So we have our weekly crate of foodstuffs. It weighs six kilos and the products are diverse. We have about 19 different products. On, as an average. We have all these 60, 60 different elements, but 19 of them is what we supply on a weekly basis on average. People say, you're an economist. What's all this about? What do you do? Do you grab the crates? Do you structure it? Do you calculate? Well, we have 34 different boxes and I calculated what this meant for the soil that we're using. So what I did was I uh, created a index, an earth equivalence index. Mm, in 2015, what we did is we produced the, we had 1,120 square meters in and through permaculture. Uh, and if we were monocropping, if we're monocropping, we would need, above and, above and beyond these 11,000 square meters that we use, we'd need an extra 1,000 square meters to be able to produce if we're monocropping. This means that permaculture is spatially much more efficient than any kind of true conventional traditional cropping methods. There's information available through uh, the website of the Island Council and through university. Now, I'm interested in where my food comes from. This is why I went to Mato. Uh, in fact, I've been taking photos of our box of produce. It seems like we have a, uh, an edible rainbow in every single crate that we produce every week. It's really quite incredible. We go to El Mato, we go to this farm, and you can see how the landscape changes uh, almost on a weekly basis. And what is key here in organic material is how we do it. What, how do we cultivate with the soil that we have? Now, we say we don't cultivate food, we cultivate the soil, because the, 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 the food is a byproduct of well-managed soil. Various different images of the farm itself, but I'd like to come back to my triangle. I'm going to look at soil. We have a loop. We have two motors. We have the networks. We have the internal network, 
This is the biomass reserves that we have on the farm, and this is what we use. And we have an external network. These are the cooperators, uh, 53 different uh, partner companies in a radius of five kilometers. And we mm, incorporate between 150 and 200 metric tons of organic waste. We, in order to do this, we use the bio uh, uh, shredder. This is our shredder. It's a pig. This is our bio shredder. It's a sheep. And then we take this to our individual plots. And here, we generate the peat, which they then use to grow plants. This is, these are key tools in our, in, in, in our farming. Now, here we go, here we have a few images of our bio shredders in motion. Here they go. Um, and here's Javier. He doesn't shred so much, but he's a quality control expert. <laughs> so every year we have this biocompost. What do we do? We shift it and then we cover our land with it. Now we have an ecology expert and we have Javier who's the, uh, in charge, together with Dasil, these two are in charge of the farm. This is an image from July 2014. This is a course that we organized with University of La Laguna there and then a few months later it looks like this. And this is 2011. We can see the evolution of an edible wood and we can see only th a few, uh, four years later the same place. So soil is the very foundation of life and of the system. We have this loop. Mm, we don't need to talk about vegetable protein, we don't need to talk about pro uh, anything. Basically what we're producing is incomparable and mm, basically organic material is an excuse for us to be able to reflect on f much wider ranging areas. This is a visit from uh, agricultural, agricultural technicians from the Island Council and we ask them when they come and visit us, what is your feeling? What's your experience been? And once I said this visit has allowed me to know that we can do things differently, uh, that we don't only have to do things in one single way. And there are experiences that are extremely important for technicians, for farmers, and for the general population at large, because we need to raise the profile and we need to empower this kind of experience for people. So, brief word of conclusion. These come from Media Up in Madrid. They have been awarded a European prize and then they came to our farm and they said, this is a place of production and experiment. This is a meeting point so that people can build learning communities. It's a place for open learning, shared learning, for the sharing economy, to be able to learn about how to do things. And it's also a meeting point for people with different profiles and knowledge and interests. And it also inspires many different fields of knowledge. It goes beyond its, its, its specific sector. And it's also rooted in local context, which gives specific solutions. And it also meets all of its uh, uh, original uh, requirements. And therefore, we have been awarded a prize from the Island Council. We are a project, uh, a pilot project, and we are a uh, agroecological laboratory for the island as well. So, a conclusion on organic material. Now, Indians in Brazil spoke about this. Now, it said, uh, a man gets sick because his food is sick. The food is sick because the plants are sick. The plants are sick because soil is sick. And, own, and from sick soil, we produce sick people. Now, this is the, the F, FAO Director General, Graciano da Silva, who spoke about this last year, because last year was the International Year of Soils. And he said, we speak about the importance of systems because soil is at the roots of these systems. So that's what we've been doing over the last 20 years. Thank you very much. <laughs>